you see a ship on the other side? I Finally, the bridge is open. Welcome to the first video in a series of videos that I'm doing about our 2017 Crossing Newfoundland by ATV trip. What you're seeing here is all the GPS tracks of all the different trips that I've done over the years. It's kind of all in one place. It looks a little uh, jumbled kind of if you look at it because there's so many icons in there. But if you zoom in, they spread out quite far. So this year, the very first day, what we did is we drove from Argentia, where the ferry arrived, which is right here. And then we drove uh, on the rail bed up until as far as we get the Placentia Junction. And then we headed left or west until we get to Clarenville. We had the biggest group we ever had this year. We had 12 people and six of us decided to go camping and six of us decided to stay at a motel. So this is the motel that the people stayed at, the St. Jude's Hotel. It's usually the place that we stay at. Now, six people went there and what we, the rest of us did is we uh, followed this other track through town. Uh, we took this red track up a, up a road a short distance to get some food and things for the night. And then we went back and followed the blue trail which is the rail bed. Uh, we took this off-road trail here, which I have marked in purple. And we ended up at Shoal Harbor Pond for the night. And for those of us that went to Shoal Harbor Pond, it was probably another, I don't know, 20 kilometers or 25 kilometers from where the guys uh, that stayed at the motel. And this is a great little spot. I found this just by zooming in on Google Earth. It looked like there was a nice beach here. Um, and I was right. When we went in, it, it's not very wide, but it was wide enough for us to put our machines and pitch up some tents for the night. So that's what we did for the first day. Okay, now that I've given you a rundown of what we did for that day, uh, I want to show you something off my blog here, or my new website. I'm going to go into crossingnewfoundlandbyatv.com. And those of you who are used to my blog will recognize uh, some of the information here. Most of the information in here came directly off my blog. I just decided to make a new website to kind of lay the information out in a more organized manner. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go over here under GPS and Maps. Click on the main map. Now, um, sometimes there's some confusion uh, what people are supposed to do when they get to the Newfoundland Ferry. Uh, every year it seems like they always wanted people to do something different. And since I've been there in September, they changed what they want people to do again. So I'll give you a rundown of what you're, what they want you to do now. It's their new policy. So when you're driving in off the 105 highway, which is this red line here, you drive straight into this, uh, to the ferry terminal, which is right here. You bring your trucks, your trailers, your ATVs, everything all together. When you get there, you show them your ID, you check in, they're going to give you your passes for the boat. Uh, and then once you do that, you're going to come drive through this parking lot. You're going to leave out here. This is the uh, rear entrance or the rear exit. And it's you can see here when you zoom in a little closer, it's right across the street, a &L parking where you have to go. So basically you drive from here, you come out to the street, come out, drive in, uh, drop your truck and trailers off, unload your machines and drive back the same way. Come right back to this entrance. You've already checked in, so you got your passes. Now what they'll do is they'll let you come in they'll tell you to come park up here at the front of the line. The ATVs and motorcycles uh, luckily get to go on the boats first before everybody else. Now my friends and I did it a little different this year. What we did was we drove straight to the parking lot. We offloaded our machines. Since we didn't check in first, we didn't have our tickets. So what we had to do was come out, uh, drive down Forester Street up the highway here, uh, across this overpass and then down through the uh, the off ramp and bring us back down into here and check in. Um, I like the new method better because you don't have to drive on the road. Even though it's a short distance, 
it's a little unnerving driving on the highway. So you'll see that in our video this year when you, in case you're wondering why we did it a little differently, but next year we'll be doing it and we'll be following uh, Marine Atlantic's policy. Okay, here we are almost at the ferry terminal. You can see the ferry in the background there. After we offloaded our machines in A&L parking, usually it takes us a little bit, so make sure you get there with plenty of time in advance. Uh, you'll see a couple of the brand new CF motos that a few of the guys brought this year. They're quite nice machines. And uh, there we are, just about ready to go, taking a couple of photos of all the machines together. And then uh, here shortly you will see us uh, driving over to the ferry terminal. Okay, here we are in the Marine Atlantic parking lot. We're all lined up, all of 11 of our machines. Uh, and there's actually quite a few machines in front of us. There were other people doing the trip the same week that we were going. We had to talk to them for a little bit before we uh, got on the boat, which was nice. Now here we go, uh, that's me in the yellow machine driving. Uh, that's Bruce in front. Uh, he's got a similar Can-Am to mine. He's got the XTP. Now our machines, you can tell here, they're pretty shiny. They won't be uh, five minutes on the trail. They'll get dusty. Uh, they won't be this clean until we get them home again. But we all kind of had a little friendly competition there to uh, see who could clean their machine up uh, the nicest before we uh, get on the trail. This part of the trip right here is so exciting. You're driving your ATVs and side by sides right on the ferry. Most people don't even really understand that you can do that until they hear about this trip. And that even, you know, people that haven't done the trip think it's so cool that you can drive your machines right on the boat without having to tow them on a trailer. Uh, you know, you come in here, everybody's excited to get going. A lot of the guys haven't done this trip before, so this is all new to them. And even the guys who have done this trip multiple times, like myself, uh, can't wait to do this every year. You get in here, you park the bikes, you know, grab a bit of your gear, get upstairs, get to your room, and then the guys all start socializing uh, uh, early on. And this is a long ferry ride. This is 16 hours, so you got to make the best of it, have some fun. Uh, the ferry ride back, luckily, is only uh, six or seven hours, which is a nice break because. Uh, you know, after you've done this for a whole week, you don't want to spend another 16 hours coming back. So uh, this is the very, basically the very beginning of the trip.
Day two, we arrive in Argentia. We usually get in around 10 a.m. We get up earlier than that, maybe seven or eight or so. And uh, usually the first thing we do is go down to the uh, cafeteria and get a hearty breakfast. And then uh, after that, maybe explore the boat a bit, go back to our rooms, make sure we get all of our gear and wait for them to tell us to go down to the uh, lower decks to uh, get under the machines and get ready to disembark from the boat. Oh, there's lots left. Yeah. I've got an old GoPro Hero, the uh, very first model I think that came out from GoPro. I uh, got a new mount to put on the rear roll bar to angle outwards just to kind of see what kind of video would get. I'd never tried it that way before. And obviously you can see here the rear view mirror blocks quite a bit of the video. I uh, should have took it out of the way, but I'm also using my... Uh, my Samsung phone there to record a bit too, just to kind of compare the two of them to see the uh, to see the difference in the video. Once you leave the ferry and the ATVs, it's actually quite easy to find the trail. On the left-hand side, you're going to see a road that splits off to the left. Just take that road follow it for about two kilometers and the trails on your left but we always stop right where the road splits first because you're really often kind of rushed getting off the ferry so we want to make sure all of our gear and everything is uh, in place the way uh, we want it before we hit the trail Okay, we are on our way and we are heading to the trail. Uh, it's just up here on the left. It's probably about, I don't know, a little less than two kilometers up. Uh, on the left, you'll see it here in a second. Uh, there, you're going to see a few buildings, and once you get past the last building, you'll just see a little gravel trail. That misting light, light rain I find for the GoPro camera cases is worse than full on rain. Uh, I have some Rain X that I put on the case, and when I do that, uh, and the wind is blowing. If it's raining, good, it blows right off. But with this light mist, it's uh, it's hard to see sometimes. So I have to keep wiping it off with the cloth. So uh, as I mentioned, we just went through uh, or by a couple of buildings, and here's the trail right here on the left. This is the start of the trail. It's a little tight and lots of water holes like this, as you can see, and a little rough in some places, but that's not really that bad. And uh, we drive on here for about 30 kilometers until you get to Placentia Junction, and then we hang left and get to, uh, uh, or sorry, then head west once you get past Placentia Junction. Though. One thing I want to make note of if anybody's taking a side-by-side -side on here, uh, this is my second year doing that, and last year was my first year I had this uh, Can-Am Commander. It's a 1000. Last year I blew both the rear shocks on the machine and I think what happened was with all the extra weight I had in the back and I hit some of these whoops that you see here now pretty fast because I was used to doing that with my uh, with my ATV and I, you just can't do it as fast in a side by side but what I did this year is I uh, crank, cranked up my shocks all the way at the settings to make them as stiff as they would go. Now these aren't the Fox podium shocks, they're just the regular standard shocks, but you know what? It made all the difference in the world when I did that this year. It hit the bumps much, much better. I was able to drive just as fast as last year and I didn't cause any issues uh, with my shocks. Yeah, I kind of like the location of the GoPro this time, uh, or this one, on the back. Uh, I'll show you some other videos up ahead there with the GoPro videos from my helmet as well, but uh, I think what I'll do is take the the rear view mirror off in the future and uh, I'll be able to get some pretty nice videos this way as well. Yeah, let's go to the left. That's more fun. You can see what I mean by all the whoops here. 
If that's not your thing, there's lots and lots of these. I'll be honest here up front in Newfoundland. You might not like those. There's not lots of them full of water like this, just the first 30 kilometers before you get to Placentia Junctions like that. But there's lots of sections on other days where you have whoops like that. But uh, the group that I have, we don't mind kind of driving fast and hitting through these whoops and stuff and, uh, and hitting the bottles here too and splashing through them. That clicking noise that you hear in the background is uh, coming from the GoPro case. I'm not sure what was rattling on it there, if it was loose or something like that, but uh, there wasn't a rattle. I remember there was no rattle when I was driving. It was just coming from the case, unfortunately. This section that's coming up here is a washout and uh, a couple of years ago, I don't know, it must have been a big storm or something like that and a uh, big pop, big section here got washed out but uh, so many machines have gone through there now. You can get through there with the machine, you just got to go slow. It's a little rough, there's some rocks, uh, good sized ones. You'll probably see in the video here, uh, you see some of the guys bouncing around and myself included. And uh, it's, But it, you just got to go slow, it's nothing uh, really too major to get through. stop here and put my machine back in uh, high gear. And we came across Paul and Ruth, who own Pirates Haven again, and uh, their relatives. We had a we stopped with them and had a quick uh, quick chit chat and then we hit the trail again. We found a little muddy spot a short distance up the road that Dwayne wanted to tear through his new machine. He just got a 1000 Outlander uh, XTP and uh, he's got some uh, big tires on it and he wanted to blast through the mud there to play around a bit. You, you can see too, if you look close, he's got a uh, he built a custom rack on the back that goes into his uh, at the trailer hitch and he had it powder coated and extends out the back and attaches onto his rear rack and uh, gives him a lot more cargo space. This was the first day of our trip, and this was the first time uh, I had seen this type of weather. And it was so odd. We had sunshine, and then we'd have fog, and we'd have sunshine and fog. And you can see from the videos, and I go back and forth how they're really bright in one. And then the next, you know, a few minutes later, we drove into some serious fog, and then we'd be in there for half an hour and uh, be into sunshine. So, anyway, it made for an interesting day and uh, some interesting photographs.
get the cobwebs out. Oh, there's a hill over there. Since we left the ferry this morning, we've done about 115, 117 kilometers, and some of the guys are starting to get low on gas. Usually every year what we do is we stop in at this same place in Goobies at the Irving gas station. You have to drive a few kilometers down this paved road here and then uh, it takes you to a provincial highway which you don't have to drive far luckily about 500 meters or so and it takes us into the Irving parking lot. Um, the side-by-sides don't really need gas usually at this point because they usually don't burn any more gas than an ATV does and they have usually twice the size of the gas tanks that an ATV does. They had to build a new gas station here. Yeah, I guess they were building a new gas station here, or building onto the old one. And uh, we came up through this gate around the front, and uh, the gate's supposed to be locked, and one of the workers left it open. You can see him come running up after us to yeah. close it. He didn't like us <laughs> driving through there. Apparently, we were supposed to go around the back to get to the new pump that they put in. Uh, while this gas station is being worked on. But anyhow, uh, a couple of us went to that gas pump and then the rest of us went across the street to another gas station so we didn't have to wait so long for everyone to be able to fill up. Just now we just turned off the trailway and now we're heading down a side trail that takes us back um, to St. Jude's Hotel. It's actually quite easy to find and there's a sign on the trail that points down this way. It's probably about a kilometer or so run. Once you get in down here this will take you out to the pavement and a parking lot that uh, is in a business that's next to St. Jude's and we'll have to run through there to get into uh, the hotel. But So this is pretty much the end of the day for the six guys that are not going camping with us and then the rest of us are going to drive another 25 or so kilometers to the uh, to the lake and that's, uh, I don't know, it ended up taking us probably in over an hour or so because we end up stopping in town to get a few things too. The nice thing about St. Jude's here is that once you check in you can drive around the back and the rooms have uh, doors that go out to the parking lot and you can park your machine right in front of your room. It makes it so easy to offload all your gear from your machine to go into the room. Plus you can keep an eye on it if you like because they have big windows in the rooms that look right out into the parking lot. 
Okay, six of us uh, stayed behind at St. Jude's Hotel for the night, and the other six of us are on our way to Shoal Harbor Pond, which is about 25 kilometers up the trail. So right now we're actually uh, still on the rail bed, but we're going through the town of Clarenville. Uh, the, this is the actual old train track that we're on now, and it runs through town, runs across people's property, runs across their driveways. Uh, it's quite amazing, really. And uh, we like to kind of go slow and take our time through here just to be respectful because we are actually going to be driving over people's property and so forth. Now you see there I'm using my uh, Samsung phone with an app on it for my GPS tracks to follow. And uh, I also have my iPad, you can see there too. But yeah, this is where we're going left. I wasn't actually using the iPad this year for directions, but I was using it to record all of our tracks. The ones that I am using on my phone are old tracks, and uh, since we were doing uh, some things different this year, I wanted to make sure I had a new and updated set of tracks for 2017. Just a second. I don't know, I don't think we're going to get through there. <laughs> we might have to go back to a road. Oh, maybe we can get through here. Oh yeah, I think we can get through here. It's not as bad as I thought. I think we're okay. It's not as bad as I thought. Let me come uh, guide you through. You get it in four low. Go slow, slow. Yeah, okay, turn your wheels this, this way. You're good. There you go. You got her. <laughs> yeah, you can't see. I'll tell you when you get up here. There you go. You're looking good. Just crank her over to the right. There you go. Go slow. Keep her going. You got her. You got her. Good job. Hopefully. What's that? Oh, no, no, just roll, don't stop. Come on, you got her. finally made it to a grocery store. Uh, this liquor store was attached to it so we got some food and a few drinks for the night and then uh, we had to head down the road a short distance and then get right back on the trail and we headed to the lake.
This is it. guys want to go explore and look for another spot. That's right, there's no tide with a lake. Pretty spot. The boys. Maybe. You want to go check it out? Alright, let me know what you think.